Chateau de Charmes translates directly from the French Castle of Charms, and the setting is just that. Located at the frontier of Niagara, the expansive chateau and its surrounding vineyards produce beautiful wines, producing exclusively French varietals, some you won't find anywhere else in the region. A family estate with generations of experience, sitting and sipping one of the Bosque family wines at the chateau will certainly charm you. President of Shadow de Charms, how involved are you in the actual management of the vineyards themselves? Well, my my history with the vineyards goes back to the you know very very start of the winery when my you know dad started it. Uh, I was a high school student, and uh, at the age of 17, it was my summer job was to plant uh, plant vines, and uh, you know I did that for a number of uh, of summers. I ended up planting thousands of vines, and uh, eventually you know led the vineyard crew and which uh, I still did when I was uh, even in, in university and uh, eventually um, you know led the crew that planted these vines right you know, right here in the summer of 1983 and they're they're still the original the original vines from the, the 1983 planting they're more than 35 years old 90 percent of the wine business is what goes on in the in the in the vineyards you know like you can't make great wine if you don't start with great grapes. This part of the process, the first part of the process, you know, what takes place here from early March until into November is absolutely crucial to the overall uh, health of your, of your enter enterprise. You, you can't screw uh, this, this part of it up and expect to make up for it later on, uh, you know, the, um, the winemaker uh, may be extremely talented, but she'll be the first to tell you that, uh, you know, if, if you want her to make great, great wine, you got to give her great grapes. Yesterday we harvested the Chardonnay from the San David's Bench Vineyard, which for us is the vineyard around the Chateau. And today we are harvesting the Chardonnay on the other side of the road, around the Paul Bosque Estate. Uh, those two vineyards have only one road that separates them. If it's 50 meters, that's all it is. And they, have, they are made the same way in terms of winemaking and barrel regimes and everything but they are so different in your glass. Uh, the sand of its bench gives you a much more mineral, um, lemony, tangy kind of Chardonnay, where the Paul Basque is more on the floral side and rich mouthfeel. So 50 meters makes a big, big difference. And when we go to soil analysis, it's actually also a different kind of soil, like both clay loam, but different type of the Aldeman clay loam and the Smithville clay loam on the other side. What I love the most is taking those grapes. I, I see this, every vintage is like so different, right? So taking those grapes to a wine, turn them into a wine and give it a bit of my signature on it, but not too much because I love to respect the terroir and I love that you have a sense of place when you drink the wine and give emotions to people when they drink it. You know, the, the concept of terroir is, is uh, encompasses many, you know, many things, soil, climate, but uh, sometimes people don't uh, appreciate how much of a factor human intervention uh, is. And, uh, the best wines come from vines that have been babied, you know, and uh, and they get uh, a lot of individual attention. <clears throat> we farm sustainably, and uh, and if you take care of the vineyard, uh, it'll take care of you. And uh, this vineyard has taken care of us by producing the highest quality uh, fruit that we that we own of our four vineyard sites, and. Um, 
uh, it, it, um, it's rewarded us with its longevity, you know, more than 35 years and going, and going strong.